Well, they did something. Uh, it wasn't, they did a whole lot of nothing. It wasn't exactly uh, what uh, Willie Taggart had in mind. Uh, we are here at uh, Doe Campbell Stadium where Florida State lost 24-3 to mm-hmm. in their season opener under Willie Taggart, Labor Day night. Uh, pretty much a disaster from the opening series. Florida State lets uh, Virginia Tech go the length of the field, 10 plays, 75 yards, quick touchdown, and then it was pretty much a wrap. Florida State scored three points the rest of the way, a bunch of turnovers, a bunch of tackles for losses. Uh, pretty much a debacle. Uh, we spoke to Willie Taggart afterwards, and he uh, seemed not surprisingly, uh, I don't say dismayed. How would you describe what uh, Willie seemed like after this I game? I feel like depressed, despondent. I mean, it was it was all there. Uh, any other D words you might want to use? Uh, because it was uh, depressing to watch. I think Florida State fans are like, what? what is this? What in the world is this? Um, I don't think they're as bad as they looked, but they were certainly bad enough to only score three points on national television. Um, so, so yeah, man, it was a, it was a, not a fun sight. It, had, it couldn't have been, obviously, for Florida State fans. And I think what, what might worry some is, like, where were the adjustments? You know, again, it's a small, small sample size. It's one game. Jimbo Fisher's first real game as a Florida State head coach was an abomination in Oklahoma. I don't think this Virginia Tech team is as good as that Oklahoma team, and I think Willie has better players than Jimbo had in 2010 when that season started. But still, it was awful. And when you watch that game, you watch Mark Stoops, you're like, what in the world is he doing? He can't call a defense because he couldn't make any adjustments. That's kind of what it looked like tonight with Willie Taggart, but it's one game. It's just one game. They didn't, they never made any, in my opinion, anyway, they never made really any adjustments to anything Virginia Tech was doing. In fact, the third quarter after halftime, when you're supposed to figure out what you should be doing, they had minus seven yards in the third quarter. And, in, and other than the Cam Akers run, They didn't have another first down in the second half. It was a perfect storm, and I'm not going to make excuses, but the field position killed them also during that whole, most of that second half. They kept getting pinned back inside the But they were the reason of the field position because they had a good, I think they got the ball to start the half at the 25 because of a touchback and then went backwards and had a punt out of their end zone. But then every time they got it after that, after that, yeah. the If the defense should have just let them score. And then at least (laughs) the offense. Reset it. Yeah, at least the offense wouldn't have to be at the four all the time. But, yeah, it was, uh, Uh, there wasn't, there weren't really in how many bright spots can you think of? Yeah, there were a qu- couple of quality individual plays. The long Cam Akers run, uh, a couple long. There was a few long passes, but it just seemed like every time they got going, they never got Virginia Tech on their heels. I mean, that's kind of right. what the whole point of this offense is: is once you get some momentum, the defense gets on their heels, you start going tempo, you start putting them on their, uh, you know, on the defensive. Uh, partly Virginia Tech with some gamesmanship uh, yeah. had about 75 trips out from the trainer to the to the field to, to slow things down. Prayers up for 94, by the way, because he was able to battle back from that really ugly looking injury to, just... to come back three plays later. Uh, so that was an issue. But even there were other times where they could have gotten tempo and they didn't do it. De- right. Either DeAndre Francois or the time I think the most indicative play of the game was Florida State gets down to the one yard line. Should be a touchdown. They don't review it. They, they hustle up to the line to get off a play and then they false start. There's no review. They get pushed back to a six, and they go backwards. You also had missed field goals. Again, five turnovers. Yeah. Uh, DeAndre Francois, I think if there was a bright spot, the first game back after not playing for a year, he didn't play bad. He played pretty well for the most part until the end when he kind of forced some things. Yeah, and he was, I mean, he wasn't any good at all in the second half. I think yeah. he threw for 18 yards or 19 yards again, in the second half. Always... But they were always backed up, and every first down was a five-yard loss. Every first down. So he was always second and 15. They'd run it again. I, what, what you wonder about is when you get into the red zone, and that's the thing with these offenses, you get in the red zone and you're not physical, which they are not up front, how do you score against good defenses when you're in the red zone? It certainly isn't throwing to the wide side of the field 10 yards behind, you know, four yards behind the line of scrimmage. There are a lot of plays like that where you kind of shook your head. But again, I know he gets paid a lot of money. I know it's his, he's been a coach for nine years. It, it's got to, it, there, there is a learning curve, even at a, even at a place like Florida State. And you better hope there's a learning curve and this isn't just what it is. Well, I think the big questions FSU fans are going to have after tonight are, is there anything that could be done for the offensive line and the blocking? And it wasn't just the offensive line. The receivers did not block well. Right. Nobody blocked well on that entire team. Uh, can the blocking get any better? Do they have the personnel to block any better? And then will Willie make some adjustments to, to get better? I would assume Willie Taggart's going to make some adjustments. He has coached. Uh, he coached at Oregon. He coached at USF. Right. I mean, he's, he's won football games before. Uh, you would have liked to have seen those adjustments tonight. They didn't happen. I think he'll make some adjustments. Now he knows what his guy's limitations are. But those guys just have to block better. Um, and then they got to get better players. I mean, that, 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 some of it can be a short-term fix. 
but some of it's going to have to be a long-term fix. I think at the offensive line, it's going to be a year or two. Do you think they, they should have, like, tryouts on, like, the intramural fields? Open it a couple up. Days, open Maybe. Up. There's some great athletes at Florida State, but there's, like, 40,000 students here. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's one option. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think that it's going to be recruiting over the next year or two, yeah. I think, is going to, to solve some of those problems. But the play calling didn't help them at all tonight. Um, it was a, just a complete debacle every way around. I understand – Florida State fans are obviously furious, and Willie understands that. I thought that was. Do you think they're? I mean, I know the message boards are the message boards. Do you think Florida State fans are furious, or like a combination of depressed and, and confused, concerned, and confused, and confused? Did you I, get the right guy? I mean, I think that's yeah. a natural. And again, it's one. It's one game, and uh, I've said since they hired him, I hope this dude wins big, and I think he can win. He's won everywhere he's been. But I, don't you think that's where maybe yeah. Florida State fans, and and that's not fair. But also, you just lost 24 to 3 on national television, so those kind of questions are going to come up. Yeah. Well, we're just going to wrap it up here from. Uh, Aslan's Dylan. wrapping us up. He's giving us the wrap up time. He wants He's to heard back, enough. Wants to leave. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Real quick, though, the defense. I thought the defense yeah. did a, 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 a admirable job after the first. You'd like first to drive. see a better first drive, but yeah. after that, yeah. Yeah. No, they did play pretty well. They they gang tackled. They got a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Uh, I think Harlan Barnett called some good uh, defense plays. They got some pressure from different places. The linebacker play early on was awful, which was a, which was a big concern going in, and uh, and then they also had a couple key guys out that could help. DeKalen Brooks didn't play; right. uh, he might help at linebacker. Sam Samuels didn't play much, Sam, and Cole Minshew didn't play, uh, who should help on the offensive line. So there are a few things if you get those guys back, maybe that helps as well. But anyway, I want to leave leave everyone with, with a the, stat: the Ohio State. You do that. Okay, so four years ago, folks, Ohio State played Virginia Tech at home and lost, kind of in an embarrassing fashion, won the national championship. So don't give up, folks. Don't ever give up. <laughs>